as a board member, you were you were you had access to privileged information um, before 2017, before any of this this started. Did you ever share any of that privileged information with with anybody else outside the company? Never. Uh, I was always very careful in as I <clears throat> updated other shareholders of the progress of the company to make sure anything I told them was already in the public domain, things that uh, you know were not privileged at all, and uh, was always very careful about that. And in any regard, uh, the stock wasn't publicly traded before then, and all the stock that was sold was sold in what they call the private placement. Uh, to sophisticated investors with 100 page documents and full disclosure of everything. So everything was done uh, properly. And I should also say my role in the company, including a member of the board, was cleared by the Ethics Committee as I came in six years ago. As all of my outside business interests uh, were disclosed uh, when I came to Congress, and they asked for certain changes, and I did make the changes uh, that, that they required as I came here six years ago. When did you first learn uh, of the, the federal charges? When, when, were, when were you first tipped off about that? Uh, when they knocked on my door on April 25th uh, at 6 a.m. What was that like? I mean, you've never faced anything like this in the past. Yeah, that, that was the shock of all shocks, to, to have, it uh, turns out, you know, two agents at your door at, at 6, 6 a.m., uh, you know, saying they just want to talk. Uh, as it turns out, you know, they don't read you your rights. They don't tell you you can have an attorney. They don't tell you why they're there. It's just, oh, we'd like to talk. Uh, and the next thing you know, of course, you're innocent. You invite them in. I'm, you know, in a bathrobe, you know, bare feet, and you just got out of bed. And, uh, you know, I chatted with them for 45 minutes or so, and they wanted to know about my involvement. I shared everything from A to Z. Uh, and then at the end of it all, they and said, oh, by the way, we have a subpoena for you. <laughs> wow. Did not tell me at the door. Did not once read me my rights, tell me I had the right to an attorney. It was all on the supposition we just want to talk. And I thought it was related to the ethics piece, that this was just another, another version of what had been started back in November of uh, 2016. So it came as a shock. Beyond the shock, it was, yeah, you, you could just imagine. Around April, a grand jury was, was convened. Um, there was a plea that was offered at the time. Why not take that plea? Well, again, I can't talk about the case. Uh, you know, that was disclosed. I don't even want to get into that. But, uh, you know, I am innocent, and uh, you know, I'm going to fight this uh, right to the end in court, and I will be exonerated. CBS News has exclusive video of you on the phone on the White House lawn around the same time that these accusations are detailed in that uh, federal indictment. Who are you talking to? Again, I don't want to get into the case at all. You know, that's something we will defend probably sometime next year in court, so I, I really can't get into details. Did you ever divulge privileged information to either your son Cameron or anyone else? Again, I'm not going to discuss the case, uh, Dave, other than to, again, uh, remind everyone I'm innocent of the meritless charges that have been placed against me, and I'm confident I will be exonerated. This has created a tremendous amount of chaos uh, in Western New York's 27th. Um, guilt or innocence aside, there are questions about what will happen in, in November. You suspended your campaign a couple of days after the indictment was announced. What do you think should happen? Are you in communication with the folks back uh, in Western New York about what you think should happen? Right now, it's still up in the air. Well, so let me just say, you know, th it was three days after, four days after the shock of this with my family. We got together, and uh, at, at that point in time, there was no question I needed to remove the spotlight from my family as best I could. Uh, while I'm innocent, I needed to look out for my family, so I did suspend my campaign. That's the right decision. I've expressed to the county leaders, the eight county chairs, I will cooperate fully in, in uh, uh, deferring to them as they look for someone to replace me on the ballot. Uh, other than that, I am not involved. Uh, you know, the powers to be are working through that. I will leave that with them. Uh, and uh, other than that, I'm going to be very supportive. Does that mean you would be supportive of being replaced on yes. the ballot? Yes. 
how do you think that could happen, to your knowledge? Because that all is still being explored. Uh, as I understand it, they would find another spot for me to run, uh, at which point I would then decline my spot on the congressional ballot. Uh, and that's what they're working through. As I understand it, it's never been done before. Uh, so they're looking at the, the legal aspects of it. And as I've said, I'm going to cooperate fully. Uh, I have uh, every confidence that the, the folks working on this will, will get this done, and I'm going to cooperate with them. Knowing all of that and having that confidence, what is it like to have to say the words, I'm suspending my campaign? That's got to be difficult. Absolutely difficult. That I can tell you my intention was to stay here for you know, another four or five terms to work my way up in the committee assignments. I never had any eye on leadership whatsoever or entering the administration. I was wanting to move up into being a, a subcommittee chair at some point on energy and commerce and just do good, solid committee work on legislation uh, related to telecommunications, health care, uh, and, and the like, which is what that committee has jurisdiction of. And so, uh, yeah, disappointing as this was not, where I am today was not supposed to be the last chapter uh, in my book of life. Do you think that it is your last chapter? No, as my wife said, I probably will never have a last chapter. <laughs> so you believe your last day will be December 31st? Correct. Correct. Given your service to Western New York 27, do you believe that you let the voters down? No, th there's again, no, no allegations against me have a thing to do with, with my role as a member of Congress, uh, nor did I ever sell any stock. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm holding my head high, my head high. I'm here, it's business as usual, the same in the district, uh, casework, a lot of work for veterans and the elderly, which is a lot of what casework we get in my two offices in Geneseo and Lancaster here, constituents coming in, tours, uh, speaking engagements, uh, all of that's continuing because I am still the representative. I made sure a month ago uh, that I reiterated I'm going to stay here, do my job, the constituents in New York 27 deserve to have a voice and a vote. In the next two weeks, we've got to vote to, to uh, pass a, a number of appropriations bills, a continuing resolution to keep the government funded for the rest of the year. We've got the Farm Bill, which is in conference now, to make sure that's passed. Do you know what position you would be then running for? No, I've left that again. I've left that up to the other folks, uh, Nick Langworthy in Erie County and the other eight, there's seven county chairs. and. Uh, they're looking into this. Again, it's never been done, but I'll leave it up to them and the lawyers they're working with to figure something out. Well, Dave Braber joins us now, and this is a portion of a, of a much longer interview. Sure. He did not want to talk about the charges mm -hmm. against him, but there was discussion of a plea deal. He definitely acknowledged the fact that a plea deal was offered in April before he was convened uh, to the grand jury. That's obviously new information. He, of course, wouldn't talk specifics about that plea deal. I pushed him on what was included, if it was less jail time, if it was maybe something for his son Cameron or Cameron's future in-laws. Uh, but he did acknowledge the fact that there was a plea deal and certainly did not provide an information or an answer as to why he didn't take that plea yeah. deal. Yeah. But he is confident, very confident, that his name will not be on the November ballot. He really is. But as you heard him uh, discuss, he said that he is putting a lot of responsibility, a lot of the onus uh, on the, uh, the eight GOP chairs in western New York, namely uh, Nick Langworthy, of course, the GOP chair uh, here in Erie County. He believes they can get this job done. He says that he is going to be uh, working with them, going to be cooperating with them. I think he is confident that he will be removed from the ballot uh, in November. That, of course, remains to be seen, but that is a decision also that will be happening probably within the next week. You spent a lot of time mm -hmm. with the congressman, yeah. close to an hour in this interview. Uh, what was your takeaway from all that? You know, he talks about, we, we just mentioned confidence. He was confident that he was going to be around for another four or five terms. Uh, did not expect to be facing a federal indictment on charges that could put him away in federal prison for years. Um, up until he was uh, indicted, of course. And uh, now, although he was facing uh, the prospect of maybe being in office for another 10 years, he now has to face the prospect of having to box up that office on December 31st. I think he is still really trying to figure out how this all came to be. Of course, federal prosecutors would say, well, your actions 
caused this. Um, he intends to continue to fight them. He maintains his innocence. But I have a feeling that regardless of what happens with his criminal case, that December 31st is his final day in office is coming as a shock, and it's something that he is still trying to grapple with. Yeah. Oh, we need to talk about tomorrow. Sure. What sure. will happen tomorrow? We also, also have um, additional uh, interviews that are coming up tonight uh, on News 4 at 11 o'clock. We'll be hearing from the uh, State Board of Elections on what could potentially happen um, with uh, the ballot uh, on November 6th. And then coming up tomorrow, I'll be sitting down with Nick Langworthy, uh, the GOP chair, to talk about whether Collins' first opinions on this issue move the needle for him, force his hand to do anything that he wasn't expecting to do. And as you're seeing here, we will also be talking and sitting down with Nate McMurray uh, for, for an interview about his reaction to this, what he expects uh, to happen between now uh, and November, and then, of course, a little bit about uh, his campaign. All coming up tomorrow at 5 and 6, Five and six right? tomorrow. Very good. Thank you, Dave.